I will show you how you can make a USB bootable Windows installation. First you need to use the Microsoft Media Creation Tool to create the installation media on a USB drive. You need a blank drive, SSD ideally. You put that into a computer and start the Windows setup as you normally would. Yeah, the setup is loading. Pick the regular options there. Install. This computer has digital entitlement, so we don't need to enter a product key. Pick the version that it has digital entitlement to. Uh, yeah, we accept that. We're doing a... I guess we're doing a custom one. So this drive... Uh, we'll just delete everything that's on there since we don't care about anything about that. We just want to set it up on the full drive. This one's 160 gigs, which rounds down to that much. So you've got to start off with the drive in the computer, and then on the first reboot, we'll take the drive out and stick it into this enclosure, boot from it, and then finish the installation. That's the key thing to get Windows set up in a way that it will be happy to boot and run from the USB drive. If you just start the installation with your drive in the USB enclosure, it will give an error saying you can't install Windows to a USB drive. So we'll just wait for this part to complete. Now we're going to reboot the computer, but we'll power it off instead of rebooting. And we're finished with the media, the installation media, so that can be removed. Now, remove the drive, we'll add it to our external drive enclosure. These are this clear type with USB C, it is quite cheap to buy on AliExpress or similar places, and the performance of them is really good. And that's USB 3. So we'll connect that up. We'll also connect up a network so that Windows can do some things when it starts up. And let's continue. So the light's flashing on the enclosure now. So it's just going through the getting things ready to finish the Windows setup. Okay, just restarting. There's probably music for this. Who knows? Okay, let's do the Windows setup. Doing it. Yep. Keyboard. Yep, we'll take that one. No, we don't want to do any of that. Presumably there's updates. Although I did only make this Windows installation media yesterday, so in theory there won't be any more updates. So we're going to call this USB boot, since that's what this thing is. And you can use this, once it's set up, you will be able to boot this Windows on any other laptop that uses, or any other computer that uses a similar series of CPU. This is third generation Core i7, and I know from previous experience I can boot these the same installation on an eighth generation i7 computer. Within reason you can use this installation on computers from a similar family, and it will do a setting up devices and a reboot on the first go because it needs to switch over a bunch of things to work on the different chipset and CPU and other hardware. But I uh, found it very successful and useful for times when you want to do something like recovering or mirroring drives. Okay, we'll set... Um, I think it's installing the display driver. Oh, okay, we're doing it on both screens now, that's what it's doing. Okay, personal use. 
we'll enter this. I think they don't allow you to... Okay, let's just try this, an offline account. Enter a password. That'll do. Ah, oh, no, we gotta go through all this stuff again. Okay. The first school I attended, yeah, that was a good school. Okay. Yeah, and as usual, easiest way to deal with this is with the spacebar and tab. I don't want any of that stuff. Good. Getting things ready for me. That's exciting. Oh, we're almost there. There you go. Windows 11. Which is quite disgusting and annoying, but yeah, it proves that we can... Yeah, there's a few things you got to do with Windows 11 before you can use it. Like, change the taskbar back to the normal position. And install things like Explorer Patcher to put back a normal taskbar that you can use. And make it small, ungroup the buttons, turn on the text, and make the scroll bars always display. Always show the scroll bars. Turn off all the other annoying stuff. Yeah, so you can, and there's also a disable rounded corners thing you can do, which is makes it look a bit nicer. And fix all this stuff so that it expands correctly. Only go to this PC. Don't use any of that stuff. Always expand and show everything. Show everything. Don't hide extensions. I don't know why they don't set the defaults correctly on this. Never thumbnails. Although in newer Windows they have fixed it a bit. They have fixed a bit of stuff and made it so you don't have to change so many of these. If you log in using your Microsoft account it will bring the settings over from your other computers which is quite useful. We also need to do that to make it a bit nicer. There we go. Uh, we also need to turn on dark mode. That's better. So we can actually see it without burning our eyes out. And set up the colour nicely. It's getting there. Anyway, uh, we've got a USB bootable Windows now. Let's prove that by turning it off and on again just for fun. Okay, so if we turn on the computer without the drive attached, We'll end up with nothing, because there's nothing there. Uh, once upon a time, Ubuntu was there. Let's plug in the drive. I don't think you can do this. You have to turn it on with the drive plugged in normally. Oh no, look, it got it. There you go. So we're booting off the USB drive. A while back in earlier versions of Windows 10, it was not possible to do major upgrades through Windows Update on your USB drive because it would just come up with a thing saying can't install Windows on a USB drive but lately I found in the Windows 10 and presumably in the Windows 11 ones they do let you do full updates on the USB drive and it stays working so in theory this could be your primary operating system drive just always a U an external drive that you can take with you wherever you go. 
Let's just see if there are more updates being installed. It's quite good now that Windows can just install everything for you. You don't need to fossil around for drivers for all the various hardware. Uh, yeah, it's got a bit of stuff to put on. I suppose we'll do that. Little updates and drivers. We'll leave this to it and it'll come back and then we'll try booting it on this computer. Uh, this is the got 11th generation CPU which might not work but we'll try it anyway. The other thing that's interesting to notice is this Lenovo X230 computer does not comply with the minimum requirements for Windows 11 yet here we are. Here's a Windows 11 tip. Since they've removed the power performance thing from the an easily accessible place you used to be able to click and you change it to best performance can't do that anymore the setting is gone as far as I can tell so now you got to go into settings system power and battery and here you can change it to best performance yeah otherwise it's going to be limiting your computer which is quite annoying I think the updates are all done now and then we'll try it on another computer presumably you should disable windows fast startup or go restart and then turn the computer off at the bios stage so that it's fresh and ready to start on another computer I suppose let's try that anyway so at this point we'll turn off the computer and get rid of this thing so now we're going to try it on this GPD Win Max 2021 version or whatever it's called. So this thing, you cannot connect USB hard disks to the USB A ports. It won't work and you end up corrupting the drive. I have no idea why it's like that, but it's pretty annoying. So instead, we're going to use the USB C ports for external hard disks. I don't know what led to that being a thing. It's a bit annoying because I ended up corrupting a hard disk. Well, it either corrupts it or it ends up with a lot of read errors. I can't exactly remember what. So we're going to have to go into the BIOS and make sure that USB boot is enabled. Okay, so it looks like it doesn't display on the HDMI output. Okay, so USB hard disk and that are before the internal drive now achieve changes and reset so let's see if it will boot off this drive might be having a go oh yes it's definitely having a go because yeah it changes for some stupid reason they make the default orientation of the screen portrait it's so annoying why can't they set it to be normal by default? It makes setting up Windows very frustrating. I also don't think there's any shortcut to switch it to external graphics by default. It looks like it's going to boot though. Well, it, so far it looks like it is. So it defaults to that orientation for the BIOS stuff. So why not default to that for the Windows stuff? Some people have got no idea getting a mouse because it's really really hard to use that stupid pad thing doesn't have a proper track point like the Lenovo computer okay let's see if we can log into this and we'll have to go to display properties display settings and change it to normal mode not stupid mode I also wonder why can't we join like where why is the output not going onto the other display yeah I guess it won't work until the other display drivers are installed the actual display drivers but we have shown here that yes you can boot your newly created USB bootable Windows installation on we started on a third generation i7 we're now on 11th generation i7 and it worked without problems so there are some intel things that it's going to get presumably it's set up the network it looks like it has it hasn't installed sound or anything 
there'll be a whole bunch of uninstalled stuff in there in device manager usually what you got to do is get the intel driver doofy and then that will manage installing the devices for you yeah there's no display driver stuff there was the display driver installed uh we don't really need to persist with this the video is done we've got i've shown you how you can set up windows 10 or 11 on an external hard disk and then you can share it amongst computers and use it for debugging and fixing maintaining adjusting things where you don't want to boot from the internal drive or when you don't have an internal drive and you just want to test out a computer perhaps we'll finish off by going back to the original computer and proving that that still works or hoping that that still works and yeah, it's booting the original Windows installation now, which was Windows 10. Just like that. Great! Okay, back to this. We'll just check it starting back up on this original computer. Did probably have to do a setting up devices thing again, just to switch back to the other hardware. Yes, getting devices ready. Getting ready. And then rebooting to load the new drivers okay just like that USB bootable windows installation perfect for doing stuff and things for cases where you want to boot from not the internal drive or you don't have an internal drive and you want to test out computers.